Hi folks, welcome back. In a previous video, I successfully boiled water and cooked an entire egg using this tiny 20 watt solar panel and a solid state diode chain. I like to explore the edge of feasibility as I call it. So in this next experiment, I want to see how induction compares to other methods of extracting such tiny amounts of solar power for heating and cooking. In a world that is constantly obsessed with getting more to do more, I'm always looking for ways to do more with less. A lot of research and development stems from lacking adequate means to get something done. Boiling water is a basic human task, and there's a lot of ways to do it. Is this enough power to boil water? Sure it is. But what about a 100 watt solar panel? Can that boil water? Of course it can. But how about a 20 watt solar panel? Such a tiny and unassuming treasure as this should charge a cell phone or a small security light. But boiling water? Well, obviously it is possible. That's how I boiled the egg in the last experiment. I think it's amazing that only 14 watts of DC power from a tiny 20 watt solar panel can actually cook food. But in this video, I will start investigating the power of electromagnetic induction. This simple cheap circuit can induce an electrical current into a metal object, causing it to heat up. Without getting too technical, this is sort of like what happens inside of an AC transformer. I will attempt to power the induction circuit with nothing more than a small 20 watt 12 volt solar panel located outside my solar workshop and connected to about 20 feet of 14 gauge copper wire. In this simple experiment, I'm basically taking a very small 20 watt solar panel, which is outside my workshop, and it's connected to a DC watt meter. You can see that in the upper left hand corner of the screen. And that's going to measure the voltage of the solar panel itself. I'm then feeding that voltage into a DC to DC buck converter. And this is a constant current, constant voltage DC converter. It's able to adjust the current output. That's then connected to this induction circuit. I've never had one of these before. It's the first time I ever use any kind of an induction circuit. And this cost me about $10. For $10, I could not say no. I just went ahead and bought it. On the right, you can see this copper coil here, which has a test tube in it, with a piece of metal inside and some water. And what I'm trying to do is boil this water using a 20 watt solar panel and induction. Unfortunately, I can't just feed the solar panel right into this induction circuit because the impedance of this induction circuit is rather low and it would just pull the solar panel down to nothing. That's why I have the DC to DC converter here to sit in between and adjust the impedance or match the impedance between the solar panel and this induction circuit. If you're interested in learning more about running DC loads directly from PV solar panels, I have a specific video on that topic linked in the description. In this video, I go over the basics of driving DC loads directly with solar panels and explain some of the ins and outs, as well as the calculations necessary to understand the process. I would love to just run the solar panel straight in, but that's not going to work in this case. So this experiment is going to be compared to the last one where I used a solid state heating element known as a diode chain or a diode string. If you want to learn more about solid state heating elements and diode chains or diode strings, I have a couple of great videos I produced on the topic on my workbench and those are linked in the description. Versus the experiment you see here, a diode chain has the ability to hold the solar panel in what is called volts max power or VMP. Essentially it's like a maximum power point tracking circuit or a type of regulator but it requires no smart electronics and it's very robust, simple, and cheap. Now many people have never heard of such a thing as diode chains, but they exist and have potential applications in solar electric cooking and heating. I've covered this topic in detail before, so I won't repeat too much of it here. I don't expect this experiment to be as efficient as a diode chain. Anyway, let's go ahead and give this a try and see what happens. We're going to attempt to increase the power output into this test tube. I hope to be able to get about 12 watts. So I'm just going to turn the current up a little bit and as you can see it's starting to load the solar panel down and actually I'm hitting 13 watts. I don't want to pull it down too far and I think I will leave it there for now. The question is, is that enough power into this test tube? Well I'm not really sure. It's just an experiment and I'm not sure what it's going to take. But let's give it a try anyway and see what happens. You can actually see now there's uh, a bubble coming up now and then so it acts like it wants to boil. 
So yeah, um, what I need to do, I think, is improve the thermal efficiency of this whole thing. Unfortunately, um, with an induction setup, and I knew this would be a problem, there is quite a lot of heat in this coil. This coil is quite hot. And unfortunately, that means that a lot of the heat is just being wasted. Um, it's just not going anywhere but into the air. It's not going fast enough for me. So what I'm going to do is I made a little insulation jacket for the test tube. And I got a piece of, uh, this is ceramic fiber kiln insulation. This insulation is the same stuff I used in my 12 volt oven projects as well as some other projects. And I've cut these pieces and flattened them so that they will fit this test tube. And I'm going to try not to burn myself as it is quite hot. And I'm going to put the insulation around it. Try to get it back in there. If that's even possible. Well, I managed to get the insulation onto the test tube. Let's go ahead and continue the experiment. Right now the sun is starting to hit the 20 watt solar panel pretty well, so I hope to get a little bit more power out of it. So I'm going to start turning the constant current buck converter up a little bit, and you'll see it's loading the solar panel down, and I'm starting to get 8 watts. I'm just turning it a little bit at a time. If I turn it too much, the voltage will collapse and it'll just shut down. About 11 watts. Let's hold it at 11 watts and see what I can do with that. And you can see there's some condensation building up, so it's getting hot, but it isn't boiling. So I angled the solar panel a little bit to get some better power. Might pick up another watt. Let's try turning it up a bit more. And yeah, I'm able to hit almost 12 watts. Let's see if I can do the job or not. It's not very much power. You have to understand how little power this really is. 12 watts is not actually making it into the test tube. A lot of it's being wasted in all the electronics. And in this coil right here, this coil is actually getting a bit warm. Okay, so I'm starting to see some activity in the uh, test tube. There's a couple of bubbles that went up. It's not doing a lot, but it's starting to look like it wants to boil. So let's see what happens. I saw another bubble go by. I'll just make the picture a little bit bigger so you can see it. Yeah, there's actually some uh, bubbles coming up. 11.8 watts. It's fallen a little bit. It's just the way the circuit works. It's a little bit unstable. The sun is pretty steady. It's changing a little bit. It's dropped 11.8 watts. I haven't changed anything. I'm starting to see some bubbles. There you go. There's one. There it goes. Try to get the focus a little bit better here. Remember, this is only, it's less than 11.8 watts. It would be nice to get a little bit more power out of that little solar panel, but I think it's doing all it can. Let me try just a little bit of an adjustment to see if I can do at least 12 watts. Okay, I can just barely hit 12 watts. Really, 17.8 volts, I don't want to go much lower than that on this particular solar panel. Anyhow, as you can see, the water is definitely now boiling. Yep, there it is. I would call that a boil. It's not like a full boil. Now that test tube is probably too hot to touch, so I'm not going to even try it at this point. Hopefully the glass can survive what I'm doing to it. I got these test tubes for very cheap on the internet. I really don't know anything about them. They're just generic test tubes I got. Very cheap if you buy them in quantity. I assume it can handle boiling water. There we go. Now it's really going. That's more like it. It looks like the power has fallen a little bit. I did not change any settings, so I have to adjust it again. I've noticed that throughout the experiment I have to keep adjusting the power settings. And I believe it may be the DC converter, but I can't prove that. Let's just turn it up a little bit. And now you can really hear it boiling. I don't know if you can hear that. Let me try putting the microphone close. So what is the whole point of this experiment? A 20 watt solar panel is so tiny that you wouldn't think it could do much of anything. Maybe charge a cell phone or run a small security light, run small electronics, things like that. But to boil water, to cook food, seems like something that is not possible. But as you can see, it clearly is. Now, if you think about it, this small amount of water could be valuable if you're in an austere environment. The induction coil is not actually in contact with the liquid that I'm boiling. So you don't have to worry about contaminating the food or the water or whatever you're cooking. If you're interested in learning more about cooking with small solar panels and building ovens and diode chains and things of that sort, check out these other videos I have produced. Thanks for watching and see you next time.